In your D2L course, you can have automated emails sent to you, to students, or someone else based on certain conditions or triggering events. This is done through a process you can program called an intelligent agent. When run, an intelligent agent asks whether a condition has been met, and if it has been met, sends an email in accordance with your program directions. The condition can include whether a student has done something or a student hasn't done something after a period of time. So, for example, you could set up an intelligent agent that monitors whether or not your students are entering your D12 core space. If a student has not entered the space, say, for the last seven days, the agent sends an email to that student, to you, or to anyone else you designate as a recipient. That's probably the most popular use of intelligent agents, and the one we'll demonstrate here. I'm in my D2L course space, and to create an intelligent agent, I click Edit Course on the right of the nav bar. Then, on the Edit Course screen, I'll find Intelligent Agents. When I click that, it's going to take me to my Agent List screen. Here, I see any agents that I've created in the past and some information about them. For example, Agent 2 has this little icon to the right of its menu caret. That means that Agent 2 is disabled and will not run under any circumstance. I could quickly enable it by checking the box next to it and clicking Enable up above the grid. If an agent has run, it will show me under Last Run Date when it last ran. If an agent is scheduled to run again, that will be, of course, under Next Run Date. Under Results of Last Run, I can get some details of when it last ran. If I click the drop-down menu caret next to an agent's name, I have a bunch of options. One, I can run the agent now. Whether or not I have it scheduled to run regularly, I can always run it manually. D2L may take a minute or two to complete the run, depending on how large the class is, but the emails will send. When an agent runs, it may send emails you have programmed to have it send to various recipients. But it also sends you a confirmation email that basically just lets you know the agent ran successfully. For the emails that you have sent out by the agent, for example to students, if you include your email address in the CC line, you will receive those emails also. And that's a handy feature I'll demonstrate a little later on. I can also request a practice run where the agent will generate a report of which students met the conditions for the agent to run, but it won't actually send emails to those students as programmed. I'll still get a single email confirming that the agent ran. This is helpful just to confirm that I've configured the agent properly. I want to create a new agent, so I click the blue New button in the upper left of the Agent List screen. On the New Agent or Edit Agent screen, I get the same features. I'll start by adding a name. By default, the agent is enabled, but if you're not ready to activate it just yet, you can just uncheck this box. A description is optional, and only you, the instructor, or anyone enrolled with similar privileges will see it. Next, I need to establish some criteria. Who will trigger an email to be sent, and how will they trigger it? In most classes, I probably can just choose all users visible in the class list. But if I have colleagues enrolled as observers with instructor privileges, they may not log in frequently, and I don't want them receiving emails. So instead I'll click Users with Specific Roles and check the box specifically for students. This will mean that the agent is only watching students enrolled in the class. Next, I have a couple of choices for the triggering condition. I'm not interested in knowing if a student has or has not logged into D12 overall, so I'm going to skip login activity and go down to course activity. I am interested in knowing if students have visited my D12 course space or not within the past week. So I'll check the box here, take action when the following course activity is satisfied, and I'll leave the radio button on for user has not accessed the course in the last given days, and I'll type 7 into the text box. Now, this intelligent agent is monitoring to see if any students enrolled in this course have not visited the course in the last week. If that condition is satisfied, the next question is, what does this agent do? And for that, we go down to Actions. 
I have two choices here. Take action only the first time the agent's criteria are satisfied, or take action every time the agent is evaluated, and so on. I'll choose the second option. If it's possible that a student may drift away from my course twice in a semester, in both cases the student will receive an email. Next, let's set up the email. I check the box next to send an email when the criteria are satisfied. Now, I want to put in a code that tells D2L install any and all student email addresses for students that satisfy the criteria of this agent. And D2L will show me those codes in this handy pop-up right here. So I'll click what special email addresses can I use link down below the two CCC and BCC text boxes. I see what are called replacement strings. These are these codes that allows D2L to draw email addresses for those that satisfy the criteria of this agent. So I'll simply highlight and copy and paste that into the two block. Next, under CC, I have two choices. I can enter a code for initiating user auditors. That would be me. But since I'm the only instructor in the course, I'll just type in my own email address. And then I need to put in a subject and a message. Here again, I can use a different set of replacement strings to have the agent install specific information that may vary depending on where the agent is running and for whom. So for example, I'll consult this to see that org unit name is the name of my course as it appears in this bar up top. So here's what I'm going to put for a subject. Next, let's install the body. Let's say I want the first name of my student to be installed here. Here again, I'll return to this link, which will bring up this pop-up, initiating user first name. The initiating user is any student who triggers this agent to run. And as you saw, I could just as easily add last name and other information as well. In this case, I'm just going to stick with the first name. I'll remember to add a comma after the code. Then let's add the rest of the message. So now my email is set up. It will send to any students that trigger this agent. It's going to send a copy for each student's email to me as well, so I'll know who this agent emailed. And then it has a standardized message, including these replacement strings, to personalize the message for that student. Now I'll scroll down to scheduling. Here, I determine whether or not the agent runs on a regular basis, or I can only run it manually. If I do nothing here, I would have to run it manually. There may be agents for which that is useful, especially if you're doing something like using release conditions instead of a simple course activity login. In this case, though, for my purposes, I want it to run daily. So I'll click Use Schedule. I'll click Update Schedule. I'll leave this at daily. And I want it to run every day. So I'm going to put one day in. And then for start and end date, I'll just put the course start and end date. And I can do that either by entering the dates in or I can use the calendar picker. And let's say the semester started on the 31st of August and let's say the semester ends or at least the course closes on December 31st. Now I click update. And D12 confirms my choices. Schedule evaluated every one day starting Monday, August 31st, until Thursday, December 31st. And then it'll even tell me what's the next day it will run. 
and that happens to be today, or rather this evening. And then I'll click Save and Close. Back on this screen, D12 once again tells me when this agent is next scheduled to run, which is later today. But bear in mind, it might run tonight at 7 p.m. and determine that no students satisfy the criteria for sending an email, in which case it will send no email. That would be a good thing. It means all my students have visited this course within the past week. Let's say this agent has run recently, and it has identified two students that met the criteria. They haven't been in the course in the last week. In that case, they would receive an email, and I would receive a copy of an email that looked like this. You can see that the replacement strings have properly installed information in the subject and the body of this email. Notice in this email, though, that although the email came from do not reply at kinesius.edu, my name is installed. And if a student clicks reply, this email will reply to my Canisius College email address. By default, this is not the case in the intelligent agent system in D2L. But let's see how you can set that up for your intelligent agents in your course. So let's make it easier for students to reply to you directly from the notification email. On the agent list screen, I go to the upper right and I click settings. The first time I come in here, it's going to say use the system defaults. That radio button will be pressed. And these are the system defaults. I pressed this radio button, type in my name, type in my reply to email address. Now, if my students click reply in their email client to the notification sent from D2L, that reply will go to me at my Canisius email address. A few other things about intelligent agents. D12 runs daily automated agents, intelligent agents, at around 7 p.m. at night. So the agents run once a day at 7 p.m. If you want to run any other time, you have to run manually. Agents copy between courses, but those copied into new courses are disabled by default. You need to enable them. But that's probably a good time to set the start and end dates too, and double check that they are properly configured. In this video, I've shown you how to create a simple intelligent agent that notifies you if a student has neglected your course space in D2L. But there are other possibilities with intelligent agents as well, and it's worth experimenting with them.